Hi, and welcome to 5-Minute Statistics for Clinical Research. My name is Caroline Herborn, and I am part of the Biostatistics team at GCP Service International. When conducting a clinical trial, one of the most important aspects is to define the objective of a study and to decide on what the decision in favor of or against the investigational product will be based. It is here where the definition of hypothesis comes into play. In today's video, we want to give you a brief overview of how study hypotheses are chosen, as well as how to interpret study results based on these hypotheses. Once it is decided what the objective of a clinical trial should be and how it will be measured, this is when the study hypothesis must be defined. Hypotheses always come in pairs, called the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis describes a non-favorable scenario where an investigational product would have no impact on the outcome measured. The aim of the trial is therefore to provide evidence that this hypothesis is not true. Let's take an example of a medication that is supposed to reduce your blood pressure. The null hypothesis could be that your blood pressure three months after continuous intake of the medication did not change from before you started taking the medication. Within a clinical trial, the aim is to obtain evidence that shows the opposite, in this case that the blood pressure did change after intake of the medication. This would be described as the alternative hypothesis. It is that scenario opposing the null hypothesis that you would like to support. There are two possibilities of how to formulate your hypothesis, and they depend on your objective. Do you want to prove that the blood pressure is changing into one direction, meaning that you expect it to increase or decrease with time? Or do you not have any expectations and just want to see if there is a change in comparison to the start of the trial? The first approach is called a one-sided hypothesis test and has the following notation. The null hypothesis states that the difference in blood pressure between the start of the trial and after three months is the same. So for example, a blood pressure of 80 at the beginning and at the end of the trial with a resulting difference of zero. We are not interested if it has increased, nevertheless we use equal or larger than zero here because in hypothesis testing all outcome possibilities must be covered. The alternative hypothesis which we aim to find evidence for is that the blood pressure decreases over the period of the trial so that the difference between the two time points is smaller than zero. For example a blood pressure of 70 in the end minus 90 in the beginning of the trial equals minus 20. The blood pressure has decreased by 20 mm mercury. The second approach is called a two-sided hypothesis test and has the following notation. The null hypothesis here states that there will be no change in blood pressure between the beginning and the end of the trial. Whereas the alternative hypothesis is to prove that there is a difference between the blood pressures measured at the start and at the end of the trial in either direction. There are different ways to do the notation depending on what you compare. For example, if you have only one treatment, like in this example, where you compare between different time points or if you have a control group to compare with. Therefore, the number of treatment arms also plays a role here. Based on the outcome of the experiment, we know the probability of null hypothesis being true in our setting. For example, p equals 0.016 or 1.6%. This probability is then compared to a threshold called alpha to see if we can reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Very often alpha is said to be 0.05, but this will be explained in another video. Having rejected the null hypothesis based on our probability does not mean that the alternative hypothesis is true. It just means that it is more likely to be true than the null hypothesis you tested. We say that the null hypothesis can be rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So that is it for today. As you can see, it is important to give some thoughts to your hypothesis to be able to make a reliable decision regarding your objective at the end of the trial. If there are any additional questions, our team of statisticians is happy to help you out. Leave us a message at statistics at gcp-service.com or leave a comment below. If you are significantly satisfied with the content, make sure to subscribe to not miss the next video.